system and my module that I used is the library science 111 so last semester so I'll be sharing with you my experiences so please note the fun and all the X's and by the time I'm done I hope my fears would be X. <laughs> um, just to give you a little bit of a background to my module and where it fits in um, I don't know how many of you know, but there is this research project that is called the Flexible Learning and Teaching Program, provi Provision Program, for short FLTP, and my department is called Site One, and for short LIS, Library Information and Sciences, and uh, to give you an idea, it's a campus-wide uh, research project, and the whole idea was to give students flexible access to our training. So a student-centered, uh, student that is why it's called learning first and then teaching, but the whole idea is the provision, so I'll get to that. So what you see is my table of contents, so I'll just take you through the program, the project quickly, the f and my site, and my history. So I'll, you see I'll be focusing on prior 2013, before ICAMBA and after ICAMBA, and hopefully a uh, second time around when there's a the next colloquium, I will be giving you the uh, X version. <laughs> Not X-rated. <laughs> so let me just give you a snapshot quickly of the project if you haven't heard about it. Uh, as I said, it's flexible, and the, the dimensions of the research basically is the access part. In other words, to give students access, RPL is just one of them, but the idea is to open up the doors of learning. Secondly, we need to look at our curriculum to make it more flexible for on and off campus, also blended versions, and then the delivery. It's not just ICT-based, but and I've just learned that I've been a stand-up comedian for 33 years, and I thought I was doing excellently at that. Uh, in the pro uh, project, there are three sites. I'm representing site number one. Cheryl will be ending the proceedings with site number two's experience. And then in the project, they had a third site, which is regarded as our um, leading uh, site. So the idea was to look at people coming on board and what they're doing, but then also to showcase what the campus is doing flexibly. Um, so in my site, for those of you who don't know our structure, as part of the research, our undergraduate degree, which is called BLIS, Bachelor in Library Information Science, it's a four-year degree, professional degree, and I've noticed all the other professions like social work and the others were professional training. Uh, that's one of the requirements. So we basically have two majors, namely library science and information science, and then also the rest of the degree is made up of six other subjects, preferably if the arts faculty would like it from the subjects, but you're all probably all aware that this project was born because of faculties having a tendency to close down their part-time offerings. So how can we open the doors of learning instead of closing it? And one way is to offer uh, our courses flexibly. Uh, the particular module that I am presenting prior to coming on board in ICAMVA was traditionally a print-based course. You know, the old one, where everything was done in print, the notes, the tutorials, and everything was print, the notices on the notice boards. It was face-to-face -face lectures, and the old way of communicating only was email, uh, using their student emails, and we all know they don't always read that on time to respond and to submit. Um, a little bit of the background, teaching and learning became a big issue. Uh, we had to look at throughput in the issues, and this particular course in 2012 was known as an at risk, the new name for uh, a uh, what, what was it called before? It was called at risk. Killer course. A killer course. Yeah. People didn't <laughs> like the killer course, so when I I had to go and say why your students didn't perform under the national benchmark. It became quite clear that the tutorials were offered on a fortnightly basis, and then the committee uh, recommended that I do it 
you know, weekly like all the others, so that students don't get confused with when, which week is the tutorial. So it became then weekly. So you can clearly see we tried to see how can we improve the throughput in this particular course. And then as part of the trying to improve throughput and being flexible, we asked to come on board uh, the ICAMVA, so we were given the training in 2012, the entire departmental staff. So now, I wouldn't call it a new dispensation yet, I'm not that uh, brave yet, I would just like to say this is now ICAMVA. So once again, I need to remind you it was an experimentation for me because as I said, I was an excellent stand-up comedian and when you're in your comfort zone and you have to embrace it and you have to struggle with stuff, learning management system, you know? <laughs> you have been managing, you have been managing your learning and teacher, uh, learners to the best of your ability. Now you're asked to embrace this and you sit with this fear, am I going to be as excellent as it was? As I'm, am I going to be shown up? So you start, so you start reading up all these fancy terms and blend it. I'm blending in uh, one way. Oh, it's me uh, complemented by, so yes. So the face-to-face -face lectures, I'm used to that. And tutorials was also a new thing at one stage. So now it's just complemented by, and I, along with uh, the CIECT team, uh, developed the course. Um, and I used the e-tools, namely the course resources, the lesson plan and the pages. And then I decided, but I already did this. I only had to put it up in electronic format. And then I learned, oh, but it's very static. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm not bragging here, but I came to tell you that I am and I have a presence on Ecamva, and I've learned that it is static. So the vodcast, the podcast people, all of the things that I've heard this morning, I will get there. <laughs> but my one interactive aspect was my announcements. <laughs> and boy, oh boy, let me tell you, I then had no print equivalents. And can I tell you, the print equivalent was quite a challenge. Because students are so used to those notes, especially the repeaters in a course. They, want, they still didn't want to buy notes, and then they used last year's notes. And this is the one thing that ICAMVA helped me to do. I could update, I could upload the stuff, and then they would miss out because they would sit with the old printed stuff. So in terms of my experiences, there's another X. <laughs> As logistical things, from the beginning there were those logistical glitches. And when you have a fear already and you encounter something, you can say, see there? I, I'm just going back to what I'm good at and the way I used to do it because I know I can master it. I'm a mistress of it, not a master. I'm a mistress of it. So from the beginning, there were these log logistical glitches, uh, times when you needed to show off in class, go onto the site, this is how you access this, this is how you log on. Um, the, the technology would fail you. Right? And when you had to share it with your colleagues, because you're the first one going into this, because this library science one one one, which had to be followed up with library science one to one, etc. Colleagues said, Why must we do this? We have e teaching. And but this course and I was never on e teaching, so I had to convince others, if I can, you can go through it, it will get better. So at the beginning the, uh, the, the glitches that we ex discovered was not because of our own making, it was registration issues. You know that two weeks when students can add on and delete, and when the systems are supposed to talk to one another and they don't, then students experience this as a huge bottleneck. But by now it's sorted, all right? Then another thing that I've experienced is that you cannot assume all the students have the necessary ICT skills that you think that should be in place. You know that they know how to download. Some students could see the stuff, but they don't know how to download, for example, the notes or the tutorials and the presentations and the stuff that you've uploaded. The third bullet that you see on my screen is the reading skills. This is a reading course because it's called the, in, uh, the History of Recorded Information and the Various Information Agencies. 
So this is an introductory course to library science, so they have to get an idea where did libraries come from the history. And then what other agencies besides libraries are there that deal with information. And this is also a service course for the fac arts faculty, so that is why the school is a broad course. And as a department, like all of us, concerned about our students' reading skills and the deficits that they come with, we thought that we're going to make this a reading course. You know, curriculum based, but let them read more. The students, of course, complained at the end with the course evaluation that the tutorial pieces were too long. And we all know that your ordinary research article is about eight to nine pages. That is way too much for them to read. They just don't want to read more than two to three pages. Um, so these were, and then the other, one thing I can tell you, those were the challenges, initial challenges. But if I can tell you, the announcements all the students liked the announcements because I was in co continuous uh, contact with them. But the bonus was when the part-time group will tell you, Mrs. Vidway, now we don't feel like Cinderella's anymore. We know exactly what you're telling the, the full-time students. And I learned they've got this fear that the full-time students get more than that they get in the part-time class. They know exactly what the course content would be, what I'm talking about in my this class, because they can see the same communication. And that for me was such a bonus, because I don't necessarily teach the part-time class. And you know, the, con the contribution of the lecturer or the facilitator is so important. It's not just what is on ICAMBA or on a PowerPoint. It's that extra that is given. So the announcement is more than just announcing. It became a real tool of communication. And personally, having gone through this, I have overcome my initial fear of you know, engaging with a learning management system. Because I've learned not just to manage myself over the years, but to learn to do this. And my future and other actions, we are busy. Uh, we've just. Um, done some research, we're busy analyzing the, uh, the evaluation of the course and the Canva. And part of the questions that we've been asking is, uh, which courses have you been taken in the first semester? Which of them was an e-learning and which was an e -Canva? So we'll be giving you feedback as to what their feelings were about the two systems. And we were asking them if they were given a chance, what would like to see improve on e -Canva? And even there they had an idea which buttons they would like to see. And then I just would like to thank the Division for Lifelong Learning for giving me and my department the opportunity to be part of the research project. My own department for supporting me, going with, along with me in this project. And here I thought I'll be very ethical and just thank the entire team. But now I don't feel so bad. I can single you out as Carolyn for the person holding my hand and we're having to hold it because you need to tell me, take me through those interactive ones. <laughs> and then the opportunity for sharing it with you, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you for being my audience. Thanks. Thank you.